Art Show with your host, Jim Mafu. Pure art destruction. Guys, welcome to the creator commentary video for Girl Scout Stone Ghost issue two, published by Image Comics. This is my new creator-owned series that I am writing, drawing, coloring, and lettering. Uh, before we proceed, spoilers throughout, so if you haven't read the issue yet, if you don't want things spoiled, stop the video, check out the book first, and then come back for the behind-the-scenes magic. This is my regular standard edition cover. Little photo collage action going on here. Found this from an old 70s Playboy ad photo that I just exacto knifed out and kind of plunked into the cover. For this issue's variant cover, we had the one and only Jim Rugg rock the retailer exclusive variant cover for this issue. Absolutely incredible. Jim's an old friend of mine. Um, we met back in the day when he was still doing the first Street Angel series at Slave Labor Graphics. And, uh, oh, check this out. I also own the original art. Uh, I'm not gonna take this out of the bag, it's sealed, but this is literally a ballpoint pen drawing on a sheet of loose leaf paper um, that you can see here. But I mean, this ballpoint pen work is just absolutely stellar. Jim Rugg is the man. Thank you, Jim, if you're watching this. And I'm sure if you guys are watching this video, you know about cartoonist kayfabe and um, all the amazing things Jim and Ed Piscor are doing for the comics community. Check those guys out. Check out Jim's Patreon to support his work. Let's crack it open. Let's get into it. Um, credits page start off giving uh, some shout outs to the crew. Carmen Acosta, AKA Jane Dope on the lovely design. Adam Dumper did our logo, Girl Scout Stone Ghost logo. Jim Rugg, as I mentioned, variant cover for this issue. My homegirl, Trisha Ramos on production, in-house at Image Comics. Justin Stewart, a special thanks to him for always being there to uh, check things out, consult on issues, and uh, Justin provided some digital lettering in this issue that we will get into in one page or so. Um, before I get into this book, I have to say this is the first thing I drew when I got back from Japan. So my mind was absolutely on fire with inspiration from going to Japan. Um, it was at the end of 2019. So right before the pandemic hit, I stocked up on all this crazy influence and inspiration. Jiro Matsumoto here, one of my favorites. Um, but basically I went out there for Tokyo Comic Con. Ed Piscor hooked me up with a bunch of his crew out there. And I spent a large majority of the month that I was there, just running around to all the different bookstores and comic shops, Mandarake stores, and um, was just consuming all this manga and the influence of what they do over there. It just kind of made my brain explode. And I got back at the end of December, right before the pandemic hit and started drawing this issue. So to me, Pretty significant change between this issue and um, issue one because the influence of Japan is like pretty ripe in these pages. Um, so we start off at Taiko's secret space base, our main villain, with um, her being called away to meet with the main big sinister bad guy, uh, the Teeth. And um, one thing I'm trying to work on is the, <laughs> the lighting and glossiness. Uh, this issue was printed on glossy paper. 
different from the first issue because basically we're going through a paper and resource shortage right now. So even though I request matte paper with all my books at Image, they're basically printing on whatever paper is available. So I just got these comps today. I was a little surprised by the glossy paper. It's not my style, but the ink work and the color, like it all looks really gorgeous on the paper. I'm just trying to avoid the gloss that, you know, for video purposes, but basically getting back to it, um, Takeo is getting called into a meeting with the teeth and um, you can see in these backgrounds here, this is all influence from Steve Ditko's Doctor Strange stuff. She goes and meets the teeth and um, these are actually photos I took of my own eyes and then scanned them and put them into Photoshop and just printed them out on copy paper and cut and pasted them onto the actual artboards. Uh, Takeo and the Teeth's dialogue are digitally done to separate them from all the other characters in the series and the hand-drawn text that, that I'm using for the rest of the book, just for the simple fact that I made, wanted to make them look different and stand out. So Justin Stewart provided that digital lettering for me. The Teeth and Takeo are going over the events of last issue confirming that Gordy has planted a tracking device on Takeo. Gordy has been disposed of, taken out, eliminated by Binglesworth, one of the hired bounty hunters. So Gordy's dead, he's out of the picture, as far as they know. And the teeth is revealing that Dio needs to get into their possession because she holds a key component to him breaking out of this stasis that he's in. He's trying to consume the earth, but he's been stuck in a limbo-like stasis and he needs Dio for some sort of mysterious mining operation that will take place on earth to create something called the sacred dental floss. What is, what is this about? We shall see. We shall see. Back to the outer sector and picking right up after issue one. Turtleneck Jones blew his own brains out. Everyone is freaked out by this. Binglesworth confronts Dio and says that she's got to come with them. Suddenly weird techno wiring, crazy robotic type shit starts coming out of Turtleneck Jones. And this dude with the uh, teapot head, kettle head, Dudley, notices this. And we have a crazy dynamic skull and robotic body parts manifesting itself out of Turtleneck Jones. Um, I'll show you guys some of my original art real quick. So for these sequences on the tannish paper, I'm actually working on this kind of tan paper that I find. Pen and ink with uh, Zipatone, as you can see. Some paint, some mixed media. And then I'll go in and um, add the digital coloring. Some elements of digital coloring anyway. So you can see with this page, it's like pretty much just black and white with the yellow, and then with this, the orange, the pink, the blue, it's all being added digitally. There's no rules to any of this. I just kind of do whatever I think feels right. And whatever I'm inspired to do in the moment. This issue was like, let's just go balls out crazy. This robot figure manifests itself and says hello to everyone. This is a character called Nottis, uh that I guess was living inside Turtleneck Jones. Pretty crazy. Some of my sketches with developing this character, Nottis. I kind of knew like just right away what I wanted him to look like, like metal domed head, 
scarf-like cape wrapped around the neck, almost reflecting the turtleneck nature of Turtleneck Jones, since they're both connected. Double gun holsters. So yeah, this is uh, this is our boy Natus. Figuring out a little bit more of the cape here and all that entails. Him and Dio. This is, I guess, kind of like a size chart kind of thing. Him and Dio next to each other. So, Nadis basically asked Dio if she had a deal with Turtleneck Jones. She says, yes, I paid him half up front. The other half of the payment will come upon completion of this job. And so Nadis is excited and is like, cool, let me do my thing. The bounty hunters aren't taking any of this. And they just decide to uh, take him out, basically. So we get some, some cool action right off the bat. Nadis leaping into action, grabbing Dio. He asks her her name, and then he pulls out the twin guns, starts taking out bounty hunters like there's no tomorrow. This is where I really, you know, have fun with just action and, and violence and just cutting loose and doing things that you can only do in the comic book format, which is what I love about, about the medium. It's funny, when I look at these pages too, I'm immediately reminded of um, quarantine had just fully gone into effect and no one knew it was going on. So I was um, watching the first season of Columbo while inking these pages. So when I see this particular sequence, uh, it reminds me a lot of that. I'll, I'll pencil to instrumental music because I'm kind of writing and penciling at the same time. I'll ink and do the drawings to energetic music, no holds barred, punk, funk, jazz, metal, fusion, whatever. It can have lyrics. But then when I get to, uh, when the line work is done and I'm filling in the blacks and adding zip tone sometimes I'll pop on a podcast or an old movie or something. And in this case, it was um, the first season of Columbo which eventually went into the second season of Columbo, and I, I can't recommend it enough. Uh, Peter Falk is, uh, is amazing. So anyway, <laughs> back to the matter at hand. Um, Nottis fools Bingglesworth, the leader of the bounty hunters, and blows his brains out. Dudley is the only one left, old Kettlehead here, and starts running. Nottis... Tells Dio to grab him, but he's got some um, badass rocket shoes. Uh, who knew? You know, who knew that he had these things? So, dead bodies on the street. Dio kind of asks Nadis who he is. And she, he gives her his card and she she notices, hey, Nadis spelled backwards is Satan. So Dio is kind of suspicious of this crazy, violent strange talking weirdo that manifested himself out of turtleneck jones um right here Nottis reveals that this is grade a military brand steez jones knew that he would not survive this type of artillery so jones knew to kill himself Nottis would manifest out of him and carry on the mission and Nottis reveals that Jones will rise again in three days anyway. So Dio says, three days, a bit biblical, isn't it? He's like, yeah, the Lord works in his mysterious ways if you believe in that sort of thing. And she says, I don't. Yeah, me neither. Elsewhere, we have the reveal that Gordy was not murdered in the first issue. He survived and has been picked up by a new mysterious character. Um, when I was in Japan, I was hanging out with Takashi Okazaki, the creator of Afro Samurai. Incredible guy, really good dude. And when he saw Gordy and drawings I was doing of him, 
he he was like, man, you can't kill Gordy off. You have to keep Gordy as a character. And it made sense to me, you know, and I was, it was good to hear him say that because in the back of my mind, I was like, yeah, what was I thinking? Like I was going to kill him off in the first issue. It's bizarre that I did that. So people seem to dig Gordy a lot. I really enjoy drawing him and writing him as a character. So I'm glad that he got to live on. This character reveals that her name is Bexu, and she is from the Azarian tribe, which is a sister clan to the Girl Scouts army. And she says, we're going to fix you up, Gordy. Then we're going to go after Dio. Everything's going to work out. Cut back to Dio and Nadis in the outer sector. They find the pass that Gordy gave Dio in the bar in issue one to get the coordinates for the dream jump that they need to make. The little chicken man door guy from the first issue reveals that he's their point of contact. He has the plans for the dream jump. They're manifested in this little crystal and he gives the crystal to Dio. Dio thanks him and he basically reveals to Dio that she's on a sacred mission and, you know, she's like, hey, sacred mission, I'm just trying to recover my dead boyfriend's ashes. And he's kind of like, no, you, you don't realize, like, how special you are. She is the direct descendant of the butterfly, Choku, the very first Girl Scout. So this is a major reveal that our, our brand new character in this series has a very important role in the mythology of the Girl Scouts and their lineage. So, as Dio's processing this information, little chicken dude also reveals that he has a self-destruct timer. Once his mission is completed, he's done. So he explodes. Uh, Dio and Nadis prepare to move Turtleneck Jones's body. Cut to the outskirts of uh, the outer sector where they're digging a hole and Nadis asks Dio to fill him in on the whole dead boyfriend's ashes thing. So he asks her, hey, tell me a romantic story about how you and Billy met. She says, well, it's not that romantic of a story. So I'm doing these in every issue, the um, flashback style notebook sequence. And I don't want to give away like everything in this. There's some fun like character background stuff in this, but Basically, Dio meets Billy in college. She's competing with an evil sorority girl bitch named Camille for his affections. Um, her and her roommate, Trudy, coordinate a dream jump to get into this girl's head and mess with her. And um, this also sets up that Dio is exceptionally good at the dream jump, which will occur later on in issue four of our series. So just kind of laying the groundwork of going back into the past and establishing how Dio and her love of her life, Billy, met, revealing more about her character, her personality, but also her weaknesses and strengths. And, you know, building on just our awareness of her as, as, a, as a character and as our protagonist, you know, it's, it's fun to do this sort of stuff, to, to build up a character that's brand new. Um, we go back to the present and Nadis is like, wow, okay, great story. You know, he's like, let's... Let's get to Turtleneck Jones's spaceship. Let's get the hell out of here. Let's continue on with the mission. Uh, before I go further, showed some of these last time, but some of my script notes to myself. Basically, I'll keep a notebook for each issue and write ideas and do drawings and I'll plan things out and um, figure stuff out and then I'll 
sit and actually script the dialogue to myself and do brackets of page breakdowns, the dialogue, and how it manifests into the actual thumbnails of all the pages. And then sometimes if I have to, I'll, I'll take these really simple thumbnails and I'll blow them up, trace them on the uh, light table onto the board, or do more elaborate versions of them. It all, it all kind of depends. Like every issue is slightly different. My process is always kind of um, structured yet organic at the same time. This is another kind of important thing to keep in mind when you're doing comics. Um, for me anyway, I lay everything out as double page spreads because I don't want tangents to happen. As you can see, like when we're looking at panels, I don't want a panel here to also have the exact same size panel over here. I want each page, each spread that is to have its own feeling. Do you know what I mean? So. When you do this page and then you go to that page, there's no confusion of things jumbling up. You want your eye to be able to glide across this stuff as easy as possible. So this is one way to do that. That's super helpful and super easy. It's basically almost like Tetris style, building blocks, building the panel so that they don't conflict with each other. We're back at the evil Mistress Taco's space base. And um, Dudley has survived. He's made his way back. He rudely interrupts uh, Taco and is bowing to her and basically revealing everything went wrong. Bingle'sworth, all the bounty hunters, they all got murdered. I'm the only one who escaped. She's like, what are you blabbering about? Dio got away, and she ain't alone. Taiko says, interesting, tell me more. So, to be continued, we'll find out what happens next. Uh, again, all of this kind of fun stuff is um, Steve Ditko, Doctor Strange type influence, but filtered through my lens, obviously. That's what good people do when they, when they borrow. They don't borrow blatantly. It's more of an influence. And then twist it, filter it into your own style. We have another exciting letters page. I love getting letters from people. I especially love getting fan art. So we've got um, a piece from this girl, Cat, Old school black and white original Girl Scouts image. Badass image from this guy, uh, William, of Dio and Gordy together. Another Dio and Gordy image from Emmanuel Garcia. And a really badass, like this is a full-blown painting that uh, the Ivory Bunny on Instagram sent me. I was real thrilled to see that. Dio got busted by the uh, by the cops. These are her mug shots. Shout out to my boy Juan and his dog Gordo, our little mascot, the art su supply delivery boy. Can't mess with Gordo, man. He loves those French fries. Bonus comics, guys. Each issue is gonna have them. Once again, another <laughs> thrilling and just bugged out tale of a uh, macho tail fin. It always starts with Gordy and his son Casper expressing their love of comic books. They're in a comic shop and they find an old 70s underground comic style episode with uh, macho tail fin. This is basically macho looking for this guy named Herb. He's got something that macho wants and um, you know I'm not going to go into full detail but it's 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 basically like Macho on the scene, kind of 70s detective style. 
This is the influence again from Columbo. I'm telling you guys. <laughs> Columbo had a big influence on this particular issue. Um, so the 70s Macho Tailfin, he's got the pimp hat on, the butterfly collar. He's a suave, cool cat. He's making love to the lovely ladies. He's getting information. He's breaking down doors, busting up honkies. Causing mayhem, man. And it all boils down to this dude, Herb, borrowed and kept Macho Tailfin's Zap Comics issue seven for too long. The one with the Spain Rodriguez cover. There's a little, little shot of the Spain cover right there. Shout out to Spain Rodriguez. Love his work. He's always on the pile of influence that's next to my drawing table. Uh, Macho's got some honeys coming over and they're going to read through the, uh, they're going to get high and read through the whole collection of uh, Zap Comics. So he needed his book back. Um, Gordy says, that was uh, an interesting adventure. Macho doesn't take any shit, daddy. <laughs> Just fun. Comics are fun, man. Uh, the cover gallery, once again, my standard edition, the Jim Rugg, gorgeous ballpoint variant. Coming next issue, Beck Sue featured on the cover, heavy metal magazine style. My cover, and holy shit, guys, Matteo Scalera, variant cover for issue three, just absolutely knocked it out of the park. It's so incredible to see my friends that are some of the best artists on the planet interpreting my characters such a huge thrill man i love it got some ads on the back got to do our our pimpage t-shirts man t public you choose the size style and color original art and commissions at inkingknuckles.com check out inking knuckles art on instagram and the uh girl scouts magic socks boom this guy this girl, trade paperback, still available. Order through your comic shop or score a signed copy with an original doodle from me at jimmafu.com. That'll wrap up this video, you guys. Thank you, as always, for the love and support and buying my comic books, my work. I greatly appreciate it. My holiday gift to you and my gift for the new year Two issues, two new issues of Girl Scout Stone Ghost this month in January, January 26th for issue three. So keep an eye out for that. Um, if there are printing issues or whatever, you know, I'll announce it on my Instagram at Jim Mafu, daily updates there. But that will wrap this video. Thanks again. Keep your nose clean out there. Peace. Jim Mafood's original art and commissions are available at InkyKnuckles.com. Score a sweet little piece that you can hang up in your bomb shelter. Do you love awesome things? Are you a soldier of the Skullfunk Army? Score graphic novels, comics, prints, and enamel pins over at JimMafood.com. And make sure to check out the Skullfunk Radio Show on Spotify. Follow the Merchant of Grooves on Instagram at Jim Mafood. Oh, hot damn! Just when you thought it couldn't get any more weird, Jim Mafood brings his visual funk to the world of pop up books in Pop Up Funk, a three dimensional explosion of art from the dark master of psychedelic groove. Each copy includes. Funky Beats, Sir, Girl Scouts Army, Pure Gonzo, Everybody Loves Tank Girl, Pop Life, and Thrilling. Food One's unique brand of art destruction 
comes alive in two glorious editions of this crazy pop-up book from the Pop-Up Pioneers at Popposition Press. Now, that's a lot of pops. Bonus interior art and exciting new comics are also included. So nasty. Available at PopPositionPress.com. Dig the groove, young space cadet?